I'm Trainrider Railfan, and the R44 and R46 Fun Facts video is finally here. I'm once again joined by Jesse. Hello again! If you haven't seen the previous two parts about the car's main history, click the card to watch part 1, which has a link to part 2 at the end. This video is a list of some interesting facts about the fleet, and builds off of information in the previous videos. We will categorize R44 cars 388 to 399 as R44 MLs, despite running on the Staten Island Railway at the time of publishing this video, as many original R44 ML features are present on them. Prior to the R44's construction, two R1s, cars 165 and 192, were cut in half, lengthened to 75 feet, and renumbered to XC675 and XC575 in the late 60s. While one was used to find the areas in the system with tight clearance that might be issues for longer cars, the other was to simulate the interaction when riding between two 75-footers. The two test cars, along with other equipment assisting them, ran throughout the B Division and the Staten Island Railway. A similar test was done in 1971 with two R44 body shells, eventually becoming cars 115 and 116, equipped with sensors delivered by the St. Louis Car Co. Various curves between Bedford Avenue and Broadway Junction on the BMT Canarsie line were problematic. Other examples include Essex Street to Marcy Avenue, Broadway Junction to Alabama Avenue, and Crescent Street to Cypress Hills on the BMT Broadway Jamaica line, and the junction and curve between Myrtle Avenue Broadway and Central Avenue connecting to the BMT Myrtle Avenue line. These curves could result in the ends of the 75-footer's bodies swinging out and striking trackside objects or trains passing in the opposite direction. As a result, trains in the opposite direction would have to stop to allow the curves to clear before proceeding, making regular 75-footer service on these lines impossible, although in some cases they could still be moved if absolutely necessary. The MTA conducted a final, similar clearance test with two A-Division cars, an R12 and an R22 converted into 64 footers in 1973. The use of these cars would have the same cost benefits as with 75 footers on the B division, with 8 car trains instead of 10. Throughout the 70s and early 80s, they were used to test the entirety of the IRT to consider the feasibility of longer A division cars than the usual 51 footers. Although the test proved that 64 footers could operate within that system, tunnel, platform, and car body adjustments would have to be made. It was ultimately decided to have the planned R62 and R62A orders in the 80s use the standard 51 foot length. The R44's original door chime consisted of the first two notes of the Westminster Quarters church bell melody. At first, the chime sounded four seconds before the doors closed. Delaying service, this feature was quickly removed, and the door chime now sounds at the same time the doors start to close, rendering it somewhat useless. During the construction of the R44 fleet, it was decided to have a smaller cab door, possibly to allow for more cab space. However, an outline was left, only filled by the R46's larger doors. The outlines were removed during overhaul on the R44 MLs, but the ME2's and SIR-X R44 MLs kept them. All three car types had two safety features no longer in place today. First. Levers were present at the ends of cars to lock the end doors in an emergency. They were generally kept locked due to unsafe conditions on sharp curves. Interestingly, the levers were also placed on the MB2s, despite their unlocked end doors due to the mostly straight SIR mainline. As one would expect, the safety feature was often abused. The levers on all three car types were replaced with small panels many years before their overhaul, and some levers were removed entirely, possibly during the overhaul. Some cars feature another larger panel covering the original emergency brake pull assembly. The brake now placed to the left of its original location, possibly moved years after the overhaul. In addition, all cars were delivered with fire extinguishers in each car, possibly excepting the ME2's A cars. No photographs remain since the extinguishers were quickly stolen and were not replaced. All cars believed to have had the fire extinguishers now have a panel at one end of each car, with some variation. Some panels were also fully removed, possibly years after the overhaul. The extinguishers may have simply been taped or glued on, or there could have been a mount. But all images, even just a few years later, 
show only an empty panel. One removed cosmetic feature was glass panes on the ends of three seat benches, adjacent to the side doors. Frequent smashing by vandals led to their removal during the overhaul on the ME2s and R46s, but for whatever reason, the R44 MLs kept them. This exception still applied to cars 388 to 399, even though they had been transferred to the Staten Island Railway a few years before their overhaul. On all Staten Island Railway cars today, the bars around the pane are still in place, while they were completely removed on the R46s. Interestingly, the R44 MLs featured a culvert shuttle side roll sign, even though they most likely never ran on that line. The cars had had the roll sign since construction just four years before the shuttle permanently closed, the final days of service provided by a single train of Redbirds. The TA was prepared for the unlikely possibility of a rehabilitation of the shuttle, but in its state at that time, an R44 on the line would have been ridiculous. The shuttle ran on a single track with platforms in progressively worsening condition. There was even a derailment a few months before the line's closure. It's possible that a 75-footer could have sideswiped a Culver through train when entering Ditmas Avenue. The Culver shuttle was abandoned in May 1975, two months before the R46's first run. Upon arrival to the city, the R44s were delivered via the Long Island Railroad's Bay Ridge branch and parts of the South Brooklyn Railway. The R46's delivery would also use the Bay Ridge branch for some cars, but primarily via freight service carrying them from Chicago, Illinois to Hoboken, New Jersey, and via a car flow barge to the South Brooklyn Railway's New York Dock Railroad and Bush Terminal floats in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, where they would continue to the West End Line on the same route along the South Brooklyn Railway. When the R44 MLs arrived on New York City Transit property in 1971, the system had just started to experience high levels of graffiti tacking on subway cars. The extensive tacking was most evident at the IRT's 137th Street Yard that year due to easy access and weak security. Other subway yards had the same problems. The epidemic peaked across the city in 1973. The TA had started to experience disorder on the subway in the early 1960s with constant vandalism and crime, with films like Larry Pierce's The Incident demonstrating that era well. The graffiti epidemic in New York City's transit system started around the summer of 1967. A graffiti artist with the tag Julio 204 vandalized several stations, as well as the general neighborhood of Upper Manhattan. In 1969, Tacky 183 spray-painted on the exterior and interior of many subway cars. From the very beginning, the R44 MLs were doomed by the graffiti epidemic, which played a significant role in their eventual retirement in 2010. The R44's design was the basis for the state-of-the-art car, SOAC, Mary Pair prototype, which toured five U.S. cities, including New York City, Boston, Cleveland, Chicago, and Philadelphia from 1974 to 1977, demonstrating the latest rapid transit technologies at the time of its completion in 1972. The cars were stored at Boeing Berto until May 1979, when one of them was shipped to the Bud Company and the other to Prebro. They were used for additional subsystem research, like testing the advanced subsystem development program trucks and brakes until 1989, when the pair was relocated to the Seashore Trolley Museum, where they are preserved to this day. In 1972, carpeting, which was present in some other metro systems, was tested on R44 ML cars 328 to 335. A laughable law created by the transit police declared that failure to wipe your feet before entering the carpeted cars would result in an $85 fine. Obviously, enforcing this system-wide would have been impossible, and two years later, constant vandalism and the inability to keep the carpets clean led to their removal. Meanwhile, cars 208 and 209 received experimental rubber stripping on the floor. Details of this, past an image or two, are unknown, but it was likely removed during overhaul. In anticipation of the opening of the 2nd Avenue subway under the 1968 Program for Action, a test train of R44 MLs ran through the 36th Street station on the BMT 4th Avenue line at 50 miles per hour on March 6, 1974. This was done to simulate a skip stop service planned for the 2nd Avenue subway. No photographs remain of this test. After much effort, the 2nd Avenue subway was unfortunately and infamously cancelled due to the city's 1975 fiscal crisis, eliminating the original intention for R44 MLs and R46s to operate on the line. 
While the R44 MLs were never able to serve the 2nd MD subway before their retirement, in 2017, the Phase 1 portion finally opened, allowing the R46s to serve the line an entire 42 years after their introduction. With the introduction of new color route emblems for all subway routes in 1979, the prize 75 footer fleet began to receive the current day emblems. The R44 MLs, which had previously had the emblems in the middle of the side row signs, had them moved to the left and had the appearance of the interior route strip maps updated, as the R46s had had from the beginning. Around 1986, the interior route strip map on the R44 MLs and R46s were replaced by the route emblem and destination row sign like their exteriors. Also in 1979, front row signs, which had been solid color with a white circular outline, were given a black background, which too was what the R46s had had from the start. In addition, they received R46-like car number plates. Finally, the black section around the front windows on R44 MLs and R46s were removed due to the cost of maintenance with the extensive graffiti problem. Due to the ME2's lack of graffiti and the fact that their smaller system had less they needed to spend maintaining, the black section around the front windows could be kept up, remaining on all A cars until their overhaul in 1990. As mentioned in part 2 of the main video, the R44s were rebuilt by Morrison Nudson, 207 Street Yard, and Coney Island Yard. However, a third refurbishment company, the American Coastal Industries in Chesapeake, Virginia, was originally supposed to overhaul the Staten Island Railway R44s. Ten former R44 MLs operating a Staten Island Railway R44s were shipped there. But upon arriving for overhaul, the American Coastal Industries supplies failed to arrive on time from vendors. As a result, the Transit Authority shipped the 10 cars back to its property and finished the overhaul of the entire Staten Island Railway R44 fleet itself. It has been theorized that the NYCT shops performed some of the R44 MLs overhauls because Morrison Nudson had a lot on their hand with various other rolling stock, including the R46s. Because the MTA had its own facilities to rebuild subway cars, some overhauls were performed on site, with consultants and engineers from Morrison Nudson there to help. Differences between the overhauled cars were present, but not very obvious. The Morrison Nudson rebuilt R44s had better build quality and offered smoother rides, while the MTA rebuilt R44s had louder traction motors and deteriorated faster with thin sheet metals. Still, the MTA rebuilt R44s did accelerate slightly faster. On most R44 MLs, the belly bands were repainted gray instead of having the paint removed entirely, leaving the deteriorating carbon steel underneath unmended. During the R44 MLs overhaul, Cars 5228 to 5229 received stainless steel belly bands, while the rest received simply gray carbon steel stripes in place of the original blue. This material replacement test eliminated the problem of the badly damaged carbon steel bands, but proved to be costly. Despite some success, the two cars were scrapped along with the rest of the R44 MLs. The R44 MLs and R46's general overhaul LCD destination signs feature programs for Long Island Railroad and Metro North Railroad. These programs were included because the railroads threatened a strike in the early 1990s during the 75-footers overhaul. The cars were part of an order partially designed for the Staten Island Railway, so why not run them on the other railroads? The similarly sized cars would only need their third rail shoes modified before they could enter service on the Metro North Railroad Bronx commuter shuttle or similar Long Island Railroad shuttles. However, the strikes were averted and the LCD programs were never used, still in place today. Even with the retirement of the R44 MLs in 2010, 11 former R44 MLs are still running on the Staten Island Railway. Cars 388 to 399 once ran on the B Division before they were shipped to the SIR to help with growing ridership. Initially built with features for service on both NYCT and SIR, Fans can still ride these cars with R44 ML features, with the exception being 399, which was retired and is stored at Coney Island Yard. Something similar happened in 2010 with the conversion of some R142As into R188s through the installation of CBTC, still having certain R142A features. 
1972, before the arrival of the new R44s, the Staten Island Railway borrowed five air-conditioned 1955-built Long Island Railroad MP72s to relieve car shortages which came with the deterioration of the crumbling 1925-built ME1s. The first three Long Island Railroad cars arrived on May 21, 1972 for testing. Some track alignments in the St. George Terminal had to be altered for the longer cars, since the Staten Island Railway was built with BMT dimensions. The MP72's line voltage and amperage also had to be adjusted due to the inability of the Staten Island Railway substations to provide the amperage used on the Long Island Railroad. The MP72's began revenue service on June 15, 1972, followed by two more later. Running as one three-car train and one two-car train, they served the railway while it awaited the ME2's arrival in early 1973. While the borrowed trains helped relieve the fleet shortage, they weren't pleasant for passengers who had to quickly move along the narrow aisle to one of the vestibules at the ends of the cars between the close stops. With the arrival of the ME2s, the ME1s could be pulled from service and shortages could be filled, allowing for the MP72s to be returned in late April of 1973. The first three ME2s were initially delivered to NYCT property to perform a test on the BMTC beach line on January 25, 1973. A few days later, on February 1st, these cars were also tested on the Long Island Railroad. No photographs remain of this event. Although the ME2s may resemble typical rapid transit cars, the cars and the line they serve must follow certain federal railroad regulations. The ME2s have two unique features not present on their sister subway fleet. A car's number one ends feature a letter F below the cab window for front. Next to the letter, grab bars are attached for switching personnel to hold onto the train while performing moves. Initially, all 52 ME2s featured grab bars all over the cars, but around the time of their overhaul, all grab bars were removed from the B cars and most from the A cars. The R44 ML A cars transferred to the Staten Island Railway were given the F when they landed, but all 12 transfer units Interestingly, never featured grab bars. In June 2001, the SIR opened the ballpark station just west of St. George to serve the Richmond County Bank ballpark on game days during the usual June to September baseball season. The SIR R44s received a unique front row sign featuring an Uncle Sam hat resting on a baseball bat with the text Yankees Staten Island. Each game day, one train would operate two from Tottenville and two or three trains two from St. George. Service to ballpark would last until September 2009 when due to a budget crisis, the station's proximity to the St. George terminal and very low ridership to the stadium, the station was closed. The Staten Island Yankees front row sign remains and the closed station is used today as storage and for train layups. These photographs of the R46's car bodies at the Pullman Standard Plant closely resemble their post-general overhaul appearance. The cars are displayed without blue stripes, roll signs, or black sections around the front windows. The R46's original lightweight trucks were built by Rockwell International, an aerospace manufacturer participating in the Space Shuttle program. The trucks were intended for use on commuter rails with ballast beds. They could still be used on smoother rapid transit systems with light car bodies, no sharp curves, and no concrete track beds, but the New York City subway system simply was not what the Rockwell trucks were made for. Violent truck vibrations resulted in the third rail shoes separating and other mechanical issues like failure of air springs. The air springs were unable to absorb all of the vibrations and stretches, which led to massive cracks forming throughout the truck's frame. Another factor which led to severe damage was Pullman Standard putting together the trucks in individually shipped sections to save money, instead of ordering them as a whole, making the trucks lighter than expected. Making welds on the already weakly built trucks doomed them further. Despite the scrapping of the trucks in the mid-1980s, one is still intact after a brief showcase in the Transit Museum, now located in a major yard shop. It's hard to analyze door chimes because few videos exist, and many cars have fouled or transplanted chimes, but various videos of the R46's pre-GOH door chimes showcase a longer tone 
different from the R44's shorter pre-GOH door chime. The longer tone on the pre-GOH R46's stayed more or less the same after their overhauls. Thus, when you hear a shorter door chime tone today on an R46, the chime likely came from a pre-GOH R44, transplanted during the overhaul period. The R44's received longer tones after their overhaul, making them similar but still distinct from the R46's. Mayor Abraham Beam and MTA Chairman David Unick conducted a dual introduction of the R46's at 34th Street Harrow Square. The station complex consists of the BMT Broadway line on the upper level and the IND 6th Avenue line on the lower level, allowing the R46's to have two simultaneous first runs on the F and N. On July 4th, 1976, a four-car R46 consist ran an Electric Railroaders Association fan trip to traverse the BMT Eastern Division. The set operated on the BMT Broadway Brooklyn line from Essex Street to Broadway Junction, including an out and back on the entire remaining BMT Myrtle Avenue line, then onto the elevated portion of the BMT Canarsie line from Broadway Junction to Rockaway Parkway. Once again, trains operating in the opposite direction had to stop and wait for the R46 set to clear the tight curves without sideswiping them. For the United States of America's bicentennial celebration, 200th birthday, in 1976, cars 680 and 681 received American flag stripes on their belly bands. As they were the 200th and 201st cars delivered, they were briefly renumbered to 1776 and 1976 and received banners on the side windows. The cars kept their bicentennial stripes for several years, at least until 1980. In addition, many R44 MLs and recently delivered R46s received distinctive 2-in-1 M logos during the Bicentennial celebration. The Bicentennial logos contained two-letter Ms in overlapping circles. The left circle lacked the New York City transit text, and the right logo contained stars within the M, had a background of American flag stripes, and had the word Bicentennial below the letter. These logos were removed about a year later. The Bicentennial cars were displayed at the Trans Museum in 1976 to showcase the latest technology in rolling stock. At that point, the exhibition was still planned to close later that year. Of course, as we all know, the Trans Museum was a huge success and remained open. The R46s have actually been placed in the museum several more times since then, even though they are still operating. A picture from 1978 shows the Trans Museum's interesting choice of displaying an active R46 despite the worsening issues and the museum's general purpose. Another series of photos along with a YouTube video from 2011 show a merry pair of R46s stationed at the Trans Museum. The pair was there in place of three usual R9s which were out running a fan trip. It has also been theorized that the pair was placed there instead of a retired car to prepare for the retired R44 ML, which will soon be exhibited there. Pullman Standard sent car A16 to Caracas, Venezuela in 1976 to promote the upcoming Caracas Metro. Since the R46 was too tall for the loading gauge limits of the Metro, it needed special trucks to operate. Nevertheless, the R46s were an inspiration for Caracas' first-generation car design, which slightly resembled the R46s with the same 75 foot length and frame. For a similar reason, car 1210 was sent to Haifa, Israel in 1978, although no photographs remain of its presence there. Both cars were later sent back to New York City. Both cars still operate today, A16 and 1210 as 50 A66 and 5716 respectively. The issues with the R46's Rockwell International Lightweight Trucks were first discovered on March 28, 1977, three days before the R4s, R6s, R7s, R7As, and R9s were set to retire. The last R1s had retired in December of the previous year. The MTA had not anticipated any issues with the R46's taking off the mantle from this Asian fleet, and a lack of operational cars led to the unpredictable schedules that persisted through the 70s and 80s. The whole new fleet came to be known as Lemons from all the problems they had. 
the R44 ML's mechanical difficulties, as well as their long-term problematic carbon steel frames, earned them a poor reputation that kept to the day they retired. This, along with the R46's truck's potential to cause major or even deadly derailments, resulted in both the St. Louis Car Company and Pullman Standard going out of the passenger car business. St. Louis ceased operations altogether in 1974, while Pullman Standard quit passenger car production in 1982, remained in freight car production, and was sold off to Bombardier Transportation in 1987. Since then, all NYC subway car orders have been filled by foreign companies. In late 1979, with the R46 truck crisis ongoing, there was a New York State election that allowed residents to vote on a $500 million bond issue in an attempt to improve the city's transit system. The bond issue proposed the retrofitting of 280 older B-Division cars with an estimated cost of $98 million. Despite issues with 25-year-old R16 cars, they still performed better than the new R46s, so they were returned to service. In an attempt to extend the usefulness of the R16s, car 6429 was rebuilt into a mock-up for a proposed overhaul of the 207 Street Yard. Modifications included an R46-like front end, full-width cab, air conditioning, picture windows and doors, and even plans for conversion to four-car sets. The interior would also mostly mimic an R46, but the original crosswise seating, similar to the R46s, would actually be removed in favor of bench seating, like on the R30s and R32s. However, the extensive rebuild proved to be more costly than the purchase of an entirely new fleet, so the proposal was abandoned and the mock-up car was scrapped. Despite the R46's truck fiasco, even on top of their forced weekday rush hour service, they had to run at all times during December 1980 and January 1981 because of equipment shortages in the cold. Even ancient R10s had to operate on the premium JFK Express throughout early 1981 as because the R46's were busy on full-time routes keeping older cars out of the freezing night. Unfortunately, we could not find any photographs. During the 70s and 80s, all R44 MLs and R46s used the underutilized East New York Yard shops for repairs, modifications, and corrections. They were also sent to Canarsie Yard for acid bath graffiti cleaning. Carefully towed by other subway cars ranging from an R1 to an R42, the 75-footers traversed the Eastern Division one at a time to access the yards. Supposedly in the 80s, an R46 accidentally proceeded east past Broadway Junction into the Alabama Avenue station on the Jamaica Line scraping the end of the platform next to the curve. No photographs of these events could be found. After the Williamsburg Bridge rehabilitation project in the 1990s, a blanket ban is in place against 75-footers entering the Eastern Division at all, but theoretically it could still be done if service was halted in the opposite direction near Marcy Avenue. With the opening of the IND 63rd Street Line in 1989, the R44 MLs and R46s received a unique mixed F and Q route on their side roll signs. At that time, during the Manhattan Bridge Project, three services, the B, F, and Q, terminated at 21st Street Queensbridge in the north at different times of the day. It remained a northern terminal only until it was connected to the IND Queens Boulevard line in 2001. In 1989, the B served the line on evenings and weekends, the F during late nights, and the Q on weekday rush hours and middays. The unique roll sign was used for a late night F-Q combination service, which ran daily, as an F from Coney Island to 4750th Streets, and as a Q to 21st Street Queensbridge. The train operators would change the front roll sign from an F to a Q at the Broadway Lafayette Street station when traveling north, and from a Q to an F at the 4750th Street station when traveling south. The signage was used in this way to minimize passenger confusion on trains running this unexpected route. All cars kept the combination roll sign until their overhaul, when the side roll signs were removed entirely. The practice of changing front roll signs mid-route was eliminated in April of 1993, which is also why you don't see it being used on current-day combination routes, like the N to 96th Street, also known as the QVSC Beach. While most assume that no R46s ever landed on Stena Island, this did actually occur a single time. Although no photographs remain, it was documented by the Electric Railroaders Association that during the SIR R44's overhaul in 1990, Eight R46s were sent to maintain the fleet's numbers while the railway cars were in the shops. All eight cars returned to NYCT property and were overhauled the following year. 
Despite the R46's overhauls and set reconfigurations by 1992, all 752 remaining cars kept their original car numbers for another three years. This was unlike the R44 ML's renumbering during their overhaul and reconfiguration. The R46's were finally renumbered between June 1994 and April 1995. It should also be noted that the fleet's new numbers were not in the same order as their original numbers. Car 6207, part of the only R46 AB pair, was the only remaining R46 with a Hostler control panel after the overhaul. A Hostler control panel is installed on the ends of B cars and in the cabs and allows for operation of any car in order to perform yard moves or build a train. All three car types once had Hostler control as they were single units before the overhaul, but because of the reconfiguration of the NYCT cars into sets and pairs, the controls were removed. 6207's Hostler controller was deactivated and removed around 2010 after reports of the defective controller throttling up on its own when active. It could not be repaired because there were no available parts, as it was the only of its kind. All Staten Island Railway R44s still contain Hostler control as they remained single units after the overhaul. Well, finally, there's everything we could find on the infamous 1970s 75 foot fleet. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this series as much as we enjoyed making it. Have any more fun facts we missed? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next mini documentary.